Hey guys, welcome back to No Catchy Name. It's me, Ella, and today is episode number 55. Hey guys, it's been a little while. Um, I'm going to explain that real quick and then we'll get into the show. Um, my computer stopped charging. I have a laptop and that's where I edit all my videos and all that stuff and I keep all my files. And so it stopped charging and I freaked out. And for a few days, um, I was trying to fix the computer or the cord. And then my sister came over and loaned me her laptop charger to see if it worked. And it did. So my cord, like, burnt out or something. So I have to order a new one. But now it's up and running again and I can start making videos again. <laughs> so um, I missed a lot of vlogist days. And I didn't put out a No Catch Name episode last weekend because I was starting to get sick. If you watched my vlogist episodes back then... Uh, you, I would have mentioned it and you would have seen it. I was getting in a, a kidney infection. But it ended up not getting too bad, but then the laptop messed up. So anyways, all that drama's over with, and we're back here. Uh, I'm using my microphone for the first time. Hopefully it's um, not crazy loud or something. I don't know, I've not actually played with it too much. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna hop on in here. I have two finished objects this week, and one of them is a big one. It's the Mandala Madness one. The other one's not completely finished, but it's the crochet's done. And then I have a couple whips to show you. Now that I'm done with the Mandala Madness, I have more time to work on other things. I still have three things, I think, to make for the fair, which is next Saturday. It's uh, not even a week away now. It's less than a week away. Uh, but I'll, I'll have them done in plenty enough time. I'm not worried about it. They're little projects. And then I'll be ready to go to the fair. And I will be making a video of this week of all the stuff I'm taking to the fair. And then next Saturday, I will be making a video at the fair. Uh, me going and entering my items and then going back later that day to see what places I got so that's gonna be real exciting and I know a lot of people were interested in that because they've not done it and they're just curious but yeah so um, we'll go ahead and move into the finished objects for the Mandela Madness I'll have to take my microphone off but I'll edit that part out so you won't even notice it <laughs> but uh, I'll go ahead and say it's the Mandela Madness by Helen Shrimpton it is a free pattern and it was done when it came out as a crochet along over a few months because it's huge <laughs> um, so I just followed it like I was doing the crochet along I did one part at a time you know and I didn't freak out about how big the pattern was and I really enjoyed that I liked how it was split up, split up into sections uh, I will talk more about that pattern in a video later this week or next week because I'm gonna do a review uh, of that pattern video uh, because there's a lot of people that's been interested in it and asking me questions and I want to answer all those questions in one place and I just make a video all about it so that'll be coming up soon but I will go ahead and say that it was made with a G hook uh, 4.0 I think it was G hook uh, and I used seven different colors of yarn I used Red Heart Super Saver uh, oh Lord, what is it called? Pumpkin, <laughs> bright yellow, spring green, blue, amethyst, and hot red. Red hot. I was forget how it said. And I also used I love this yarn white. And then on the last roll of green, I actually used mainstays um green. I'm not sure what the color is. I don't have the ball around me anymore. I can't remember what I did with it. <laughs> But uh, because I could not find another skein of spring green at any of the Walmarts near me, none of them had sought to store for it. So I was kind of freaking out. But then I noticed that the, um, the mainstays green was close enough that it wouldn't really matter. I don't think anyone would ever notice unless I just told y'all. Like the people at the fair, I don't think they'll even notice that it's uh, different shades of green. Because <laughs> it just, they're so far apart, the greens, that you can't really tell. Anyways, um... It took me two months to finish it. I started it on June 22nd, and I finished it the last few stitches, which I filmed. It'll be in a video that I'm gonna put out later today, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, I did the last few stitches on August 22nd, and I thought that was so cool. I didn't even realize it was two months until I went to update my Ravelry page, and I saw when I was typing in the finish date, I was like, oh my gosh, it was exactly two months. But yeah, so now I'm gonna try to show it to you guys. It's huge. I will also insert a few pictures afterwards that we took. They're on the Facebook group. If you remember, you've probably already seen them, but if you're not, I will pop them up. It's huge. Let's see here. If I put it on the floor, that's how tall it is. My head's right here. Thing is ginormous. Let me bring it closer. I 
Okay, so that's what it looks like now. And now we'll go ahead and pop up a few pictures, probably over my face, <laughs> so that you can see the size. Um, we took this to a local area around our courthouse and uh, took pictures of it outside on a sunny day just because I wanted the colors to pop. Because when I take pictures of it in the house, you can't see how bright it is. Because it is a very bright and colorful blanket. So we took it over to our local um, American Legion building and took it out uh, pictures of it on a bench outside there. <sighs> yeah it's done <laughs> i was so happy for it to be done but also after i finished it i kind of was like well what do i do now because i had been working on that thing every single day for two months and it was weird when i stopped working on it but it's done i've had it put up uh after taking photos of it we i just put it up in the bedroom because i don't want jesse to accidentally mess it up and to be honest i have no idea what i'm going to do with it when the affair is over because I don't want to leave it to where it could get messed up by the kids but I, I don't want to not use it necessarily so uh, Devin and I talked we might put it on our bed for a little while just because it's pretty um, and my, <clears throat> my mom wants it she she was asking if, she, if I was gonna give it to her after the fair and I was like probably not because this is officially an heirloom for my and Devin's family <laughs> so um, if it survives all these years and Jesse becomes a man and has his own family. I'll probably gift it to him and them uh, when I'm older, and then hopefully he can keep that ball rolling as long as the blanket survives. Uh, if I had a big house with a big empty wall, I would totally frame it and hang it up. But um, I am going to, if it places at the fair, I'm going to take a big picture of it, and I'm going to frame that picture with its ribbon because that's that is easily the most amazing thing I've ever crocheted. And it's the thing so far that I'm the most proud of crocheting. So I definitely want to show it off a little bit. Um, if I can't actually show the blanket off, I want to show a good picture of it off with the ribbon that it wins. If it wins one. I'm hoping it wins one. <laughs> but yeah, that's everything I have to say about the Mandela Madness for now. Uh, if you're interested in the pattern, it'll be linked below. But I will also be making a video just for it in a few days. Uh, explaining all the yarns that I used. All the, um, the difficulty levels. <laughs> Uh, just stuff about the pattern, all, all that kind of stuff like that. So, <clears throat> be on the cover of the video. <laughs> the next finished object I have is almost 100% finished. The only thing I have to do is sew on button eyes, and it's a snowman wreath. Now, this particular one I didn't use a pattern for. I just winged it off of a photo. There is a pattern for it, because it's where the photo came from. But uh, I looked up, I was trying to find a good Christmas wreath um, for the fair, the category Christmas wreath. And I didn't want, last year I made a Grinch one, which is super cute. I'll pop up a picture real fast of it. I love that wreath. I hung it up afterwards, you know, around Christmas time. And I love it. <laughs> but um, I won first place on that one. And uh, I wanted to do something Christmassy, but not the Grinch again. So I, um, I thought I'd do a snowman one because I remembered seeing a picture of one and it was real cute. And so I looked it up on Pinterest and I found the picture I was referring to, but the link was broken. And I didn't really feel like that day searching for it. So I was like, well, I'll just save the picture and, you know, use the picture as a reference to make my own. And that's what I did. And it was super easy. It's crazy how easy it is to make your own patterns once you learn all the shapings. And I'm actually going to talk about that in another video too. A topic video coming out about amigurumis. Um, a lot of people have been interested in that and asking me questions about amigurumi. So I'm going to make a video about that too. <laughs> but here's my wreath. He ain't got no eyeballs, but uh, he actually does. They're laying right beside y'all. I just haven't sold them on yet. But what I did was for the um, the form, there's one of those foam forms. It's a 12-inch one. That's always the size I go for because it's just a good size. Um, our local Walmart has 12-inch and I think 16-inch, and I just always grab the smaller one. But what I did was I chained 21 uh, chains and then went back and forth until it, it would go around it. And that was enough to go around the whole thing. And I stitched, I sewed it together, just like whip stitched it together uh, all the way around. And then I made the head next, and it's just a ball. So I just made like an amigurumi ball. So I, you know, I started I think with six, and I increased up to the size I thought was good. And then I went straight a few rolls, and then I decreased. And the scarf I made, I think it was a 10 or 11 stitches. I don't know, I could probably count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stitches. 
and I just had a scrap ball of this Christmassy red heart. I can't remember. I think it's called like mistletoe or something like that. Um, or holly. I don't know. <laughs> but I just, you know, did uh, half double crochets back and forth. And it actually pulled pretty cool. It like, I like the way it pulled. I don't know. Around his neck, you can't see it because it's tied on there. These whites, they go in and then they come back out again on this side. It's really neat the way they pulled but um, I just made him a little scarf <laughs> back and forth until it was long enough I kept trying it on him I would wrap it around his neck and tie it in like a little knot until it was the good length that I wanted I wanted it to reach about right here to fill up that hole <laughs> and um, his nose I just I think it was like six stitches and then I went down a few and then I increased once to make it a little bit wider at the bottom and did one roll sewed it on there his mouth is just stitched on his little hat was really easy. I should have stuffed it, but I didn't. But I like it kind of fluffy. And it's just, I made a circle. <laughs> and then I did back loop only to bend it, to make it curve down. And then I um, made his hat. It was just basically like a little, like a cup. And then I did back loop only again to curve it this way, to make the brim stick out. And then I increased it a few times just to make his little brim. And these little leaves, um... I learned how to make those I think last Christmas season. They're really simple. You work in an oval shape and then you just add some uh, picos or however you say it to make it look like uh, holly leaves. And then these little berries are just um, like five or six single crochet in a magic circle tied up. I didn't make them like actual round like severe shapes. I just made them circular. But yeah, that's all I did to him. And then I'm going to put on button eyes. I already got them. I just haven't sewed them on. And he'll be done and ready for the fair and also ready for my house for Christmas time <laughs> but um, I like him I think I did good I'll pop a picture of the one that I saw on Pinterest and wanted to make but I couldn't find the pattern right away and I didn't have the patience to look for it <laughs> but uh, it does look really similar I thought I did a good job at replicating it and this would be even cute like if you made the head bigger use a 12 inch ring and then got one of the 16 inch rings because it would be just a little bit bigger than the 12 inch one because then it would be the three stacks of a snowman and you could even add more some sort of other decorations down there to uh like a little cardinal or something like he landed beside him i don't know <laughs> something Christmassy. but um i thought that'd be cute but i i actually should have made his head a smidge bigger but i like it i still like it all right that's my only other finished object even though his eyes aren't on I did work on two um, whips. One of them was one I already had started and one is a new whip for the fair. Uh, the only thing, the first one is my Halloween grading square blanket I'm working on. I'm way behind on the crochet along, but I'm trying to catch up and it's because of the Mandela, Mandela Madness. So what I did do for it is I made four, eight, twelve gray grannies. I'm caught up on the grays so far. I haven't woven in any of the ends though. And then I made one orange one. <laughs> I've got to make, um, currently, I need to make um, seven more orange. I got to make skeleton appliques, Frankenstein appliques, candy corn appliques, pumpkin appliques, and spider appliques. And then I got to make four more gray because it released yesterday and four black squares. So I am behind, but these are super fast. I can make this, I can make like six of these squares in an hour, if that. And then I'm saving all the appliques for last because they will come out really quick. They're just little appliques, so I can make them pretty fast. So I'm trying to get caught up on the squares, and then I'll get caught up on all the little appliques. Yeah. <laughs> that pattern, though, is called the Granny Square Blanket, um, Halloween Granny Square Blanket by Maria's Blue Crown. She made a couple of ones. She had a Christmas one last year, and I think she's got like a camping themed one. I'm using a J hook, which is my hook with a cookie on it. <laughs> Jesse, he'll see me use this and he'll go, Mama, that's a cookie? And I'll say, yeah, and he'll go, hum, hum, like he's eating it. It's so cute. But, um, and the yarns I'm using, I'm not even gonna talk about that. I'll um, talk about that once I get more work done on it. And I'm actually showing you guys I like it, maybe. <laughs> The other whip is right here in my bag. I gotta pull it out. Is and there's a charger in there. <laughs> um, oh wow, some of it's up here. Ooh. 
is another wreath for the fair. It is a spring thing. It's called the spring wreath by another Maria. What is it? Maria Bittner. Bit Bittner? I'm not sure how you say that. Um, let's put this back up there. Uh, it's spring themed, but it's got a bunny on it, so I'm, I'm making it Easter themed. <laughs> um, so I finished, um, I'm almost done with it, really, the pieces. I haven't got, I gotta get another foam form to put it together with, but, and all these aren't, haven't been, uh, sewn on, obviously, so they're not the shape I want them to be yet. They're a little curly. But I've made three of these little daffodils or buttercups. They'll be sewn onto it so they'll hold their shape a little bit better. I do have to put little yellow loops in there to look like those little things on the inside of the flower. But I have three of those made for it. These eggs I actually made last year. Uh, these are part of a pattern by Mary Smith that I made last year. Easter Bunny when he had a basket with little eggs in it. So I'm just going to reuse these eggs on my wreath to help it make it more Eastery. Because I already had those made, so there's no point in... And then I have the bunny made, kind of. I have his head and his ears. I haven't sewed them on, and I haven't done his face. His face is just going to be uh, embroidered on. And then I'm working on the... Let me make sure I'm not losing any stitches. The... Wreath part. The part that will be around the... Um, the form. <laughs> I'm going to copy this same pattern. There, I think there's seven rows, and then I do two green, five blue, two green, seven white, and then two blue, five green, two blue, seven white. I'm going to do that all the way around. <laughs> I'm going to go back and forth between green, blue, green, and blue, green, blue, <laughs> just to give it some color around it. And then I'll wrap that around a form and sew it on, and then sew all the little appliques on there, and it'll be a nice, pretty Eastery blanket, or blanket, wreath. Reef, reef. I always say reef with a F, and I know it's reef with a TH, but whatever. Y'all know what I mean. But yeah, that is all my whips and all of my finished objects. Um, I do have a few more things I'm going to make for the fair, and it's going to be a fall themed wreath, which I've already got it picked out. The one I'm going to make, I just haven't made it yet. And it's just going to be, instead of crocheting a thing around the form, I'm just going to wrap some fall colored yarn around it a whole bunch to, you know, make it a pretty background. And then I'm going to put some little pumpkins and fall leaves and probably some little acorns or something on there. And then I'm going to make a fall decoration, which I'm just going to make a, it's like a wall hanging of a little scarecrow. I found it and I thought he was cute and I want him for my house for fall. So I'm going to make him for the fair and then use him at the house. Um, so those are the last two things I have to finish, including that, uh, Easter Bunny wreath. So I have three more things to finish before the fair next week. And I'm sure I'll get it done because those are super fast. I can make one of these wreaths in like a few hours. The longest part is this. It takes forever. <laughs> but um, then I'll, I'm going to make a video later this week for the fair items showing you all the stuff I'm entering and all the pattern links and all that stuff. And then Saturday I will start filming that morning when we go to enter our stuff, my stuff. And then I will film that afternoon when we go back to see it um, be judged. So that video will probably be out Saturday evening, tonight, maybe Sunday morning. Depends on how late we stay at the fair. Because after the um, the judging, it opens at 4 after they judge it to, to be viewed. And then after that, at 5, there's a magic show. And I wanted to go to, to see the magic show at the fair. <laughs> so, um, and we might end up walking around or something. I don't know. We might spend a lot of time there. I don't know. We shall see. But, uh, yeah, that's about everything that I needed to cover today. Because I will talk in more depth about the Mandala Madness and fair stuff and all that stuff later. Um, it's on this other page. Right? All right. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that's everything that I needed to talk about. It's on my notes. <laughs> um, yeah, my Etsy store will be linked below if you're interested. Uh, I will be making, I got them right here, sheep zipper pouches. I just ended up getting busy they're all ready to be sewn they're just not um sewn yet <laughs> um i still got a lot of bags on there stitch markers everything's still 20 percent off for a few more days it ends august 31st well it ends september 1st you have a 
you know, all the way through the end of August 31st to get the discount. Uh, my Facebook group link below, we've got 550 something people in there now, that's a lot. <laughs> it's really cool, and when we hit 600, we'll have another pattern giveaway. And yeah, all the other links will be below if you're interested, and I will try to get more videos out this week. I'm sorry for the, the lack of videos, but it's because of technical issues and um, being a little sick for a few days. But yeah, things are getting back to normal, so now I can start with my regular videos again. And I hope this video filmed well with my microphone. Uh, if the audio sounds wonky, I'm sorry, and I'll try better next time. But yeah, I'm going to hop off here and get this edited and get ready to go to Devin's dad's house because... Devin's birthday is this Wednesday, and they're wanting us to come over today, so we think it's something to do with his birthday. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.